Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day three of the VGVN Next Ramus Release Tournament, the third edition. My name is Dan Fodancho, and today I'll once again be joined by PVDDR to do analysis and commentary on the air. Paulo, how's it going, man? What can we expect to see tonight? Good, good. How are you? Uh, I don't know. We're going to see you know two very good matches, Kalinta versus Savates and Fake versus Nairia, and then the Grand Finals. And I'm hoping we get to see some games at least as interesting as the ones we saw yesterday. They were very, very cool. Absolutely. Yesterday we had a great series of games from Group B, highlighted by a f some memorable moments. Um, a few that come to mind are Brian Kibler's little epic fail there with um, leaving Lothep on the board and forgetting about Druid Hero Power in the midst of combat map. There was also an, a, in crazy plays back to back from Hyped and Nyria's game with Mage versus Miracle Rogue. I highly encourage you guys to all check it out at youtube.com forward slash one nation of gamers where you guys can see the VODs of the tournament in case you missed anything. Um, in the meantime, today we're going to be having the two semis like you mentioned. It'll be best of seven, and we're going to expand the format a little bit where these guys can add a deck each. Can you talk a little bit about what these guys have added to the repertoire, PV? Yeah, sure. So Kalento, both Kalento and Aria added Paladin decks. They're very similar decks to the one that Savitz is already playing, you know, just Paladin control with qualities and stuff like that. A fake added Hunter, so he was, I think, the only player who did not have Hunter in his lineup, so now he also has it. And Savitz added Miracle Rogue, which is also a deck we saw a lot the past two days. You know, so not a lot of new things, I guess, except for the two Paladin decks, but we've already seen that from Savitz. So no one should be caught off guard here. Alright, so by, I can get behind it. Paladin is a deck that people for a long time didn't see in the metagame. And people are pretty happy that it's a viable archetype now, the Control Paladin. People missed it for a while, and now it's back, because the metagame has slowed down a lot. Uh, by the way, guys, there is, this, today's your last day to enter for your chance to win the Zeus Mini Sidepower PC. If you visit the link at the bottom of the overlay, as well as type giveaway in chat, you guys can be the first early birds who can get the info and subscribe while you can. I have to take a few seconds to get ready for the first match of the day. Let's hop into the class selection and see what's going to be happening between Kalento versus Savitz, our first match of the day. Keep in mind, this is a $2,500 US prize pool where the first place gets $1,000, second place gets $500. And so these people are trying to make sure to ramp up their money accordingly. Uh, they're guaranteed $300 for making the semis, but uh, you obviously want to hunt for that first place prize here. Yeah, here we see that Savit's Ben Hunter, which has been our most popular choice so far in this tournament. But Colento actually let Hunter through and decided to ban Handlock, which is the deck he's been banning uh, for basically the entire tournament, since his lineup is particularly weak to it. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to analyze it, and it's cool to see people go off the conventions, which is everyone agrees to just ban Hunter. And if you have enough classes that are strong against Hunter, which I, I count four decks from Kalento that all have a fighting chance against um, th this tier one god deck that everyone says is just worthy of bans every single time. Warrior and Paladin are two control decks which can fight with um, a bunch of the defensive maneuvers and heals. And then you have Miracle Rogue and Druid that can often outpace the Hunter by scaling really strong with some of the burst combinations. So I like Kalento's just recognizing that maybe that's not his biggest threat. Perhaps it's something like the Handlock, which can give a lot of the, the troubles, or even Zoo to a certain extent. Um, so I think the Warlock Band is a much stronger choice here from Kalento. Yeah, I definitely think so. You know, it makes sense with his entire lineup. You know, all his decks are not playing cards that they could be if he was going to face Handlock. Like, he doesn't have as many big game hunters or Black Knights as other players. So why not just, you know, get rid of that threat? And you don't care about Hunter. As you said, all his four decks have a good fighting chance against it. Definitely. Now, the first match will be Miracle versus this aggressive combo druid that we've been seeing a lot from both of these players. Uh, I think these two and Brian Kilber were the ones who brought the faster druid while everyone else brought ramp druid. So I think the um, Kalento recognizes how to play against this as Miracle Rogue. It's going to be tricky. Uh, it requires you to make sure to have the AoE clears and make sure you just don't die to Spectre Knight, right, PV? Yeah, definitely. You know, this is a matchup where uh, Savitz could just, uh, you know, aggressive Colento out of the game before he can establish, you know, a good hand and auctioneer. And, you know, he has a lot of very fast threats. And he also has a decent late game fighting chance with low tap, Spectro Knights, and Defender of Argus. So he has 
kind of two ways to attack Colento here, and Colento has to be mindful of both. All right, well, game one begins now. Colento, probably the one that people will give the slight nod to simply just because of how hot he's been. And he advanced in first place in his group once more as uh, maybe he'll keep his championship hopes alive. He is a defending, he is the returning winner of VGVN2. So people are hoping that he can continue that streak. In the meantime, Savitz hasn't had a win in a while. Um, he's been, he's won several tournaments, but it's been a couple months since he's got a first place finish. So well, other than this qualifier, I presume. And mm -hmm. from here, I think Savitz will want to have the opportunity to get another gold medal in his lineup. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Savitz, I guess Savitz and Fake are the two first open bracket winners to make it to their semifinals. So they're kind of playing for a lot of people here. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, they both have a lot of fans, and I think we're going to start off with some pretty good curve here from Savitz. He has a lot of options at disposal to put out creatures to make his board very effective. I like it. Just, again, Swarm Miracle Rogue, try to put on pressure. These sticky minions most likely will pick up some kind of defensive Argus value, and Kalanto is going to have to deal with this pretty early because, as much as you might think, ah, two, three damage a turn, it really starts racking up quickly. Yeah, definitely. And you know, he already has that low tab, so a pretty key card in the matchup. And he's not interested in innervating it out early because he wants to play in a turn where he would, you know, where Kalanto would want to play a lot of spells which is not turn three, so he decides to just innervate the, the Harvest Goal instead. Yeah, uh, Lotheb can come out and seal a lot of damage too. Say his opponent is using hero power a lot to trade, and then all of a sudden you lock things down, you buff it up with Defender of Argus, your target, so it's slightly out of range, and then Lotheb denies your opponent the ability to make big plays and AoE sweep. It's pretty devastating. And uh, Savic can just flat out win by making sure Rogue can never use their weapon to attack anymore. And then uh, from there, just Savage were out of the game. Now, meanwhile, in Kalento, he's kind of introduced with a couple of interesting choices where he can't really deal with the threats all at the same time. So he chooses to sap and take away the momentum and tempo gain through Innervate. Um, but it's just going to come right back and the problem is going <laughs> to present itself once again. Yeah, well, this is the most liberal use of Sap from Miracle Rogue I've ever seen, I think. You know, just turn 3 wants to stem the bleeding. Um, he, Clinton does have a lot of removal spells in his hand, but all of his opponent's creatures are super resilient. You know, they just... You have to kill them over and over again. It doesn't actually accomplish much to just backstab something. So he just uses that Sap to effectively remove that creature from the board. Because, you know, he, he imagines that Savitz is just not going to replay it for many, many, many turns. So it adds, acts as a removal spell, it doesn't trigger death rattle. So pretty good play by Colento here. Alright, Colento picks up preparation. It's starting to look decent hand if he had the Gadgetan Auctioneer. But uh, until then, it's just kind of hoping he's able to draw something like that. Uh, as he does have some key cards, and he might want to wait for the Azure Drake to come out before he uses Backstab. Um, so... It seems like this turn is more like a weapon up pass of some degree, but he's going to attack this uh, this Haunted Creeper before end. And what is he playing? What is he playing for when he attacks his spider here, PV? Well, probably either he's playing around Defender Fargus, which is coming down, uh, or he just wants to be able to kill the spider and then use the Blade Flurry that he has, or you know, a potential top deck fan of knives to get to clear the spider links. I'm assuming the. You know, the possibility of that happening is worth the one damage that he took. That's from his point of view. Alright, well, the Defender of Argus does come down. And the game plan of Druid is pretty straightforward. Savit's just making sure to stack and be aggressive. Uh, Kalanto has the opportunity to prep something out. Um, maybe backstab as well. It's it's a little tricky because you, you want to stop taking damage as much as possible. But you don't want to expend too many resources here and waste everything. Yeah, I mean, at this point you want to backstab the 2-3, but you, you, if you do that, you run the risk of not having those spells by the time you draw action here. So, you know, there are costs. Even though it costs zero, it's, you know, just losing that card is a significant cost, but it's probably not going to get much better than that. Ah, that's right. A, a mechanic that often isn't exactly obvious is when stealth minions get taunt and they're still in stealth, you don't actually have the taunt active. So Kalento can bypass that until the Shade of Next Remus reveals itself. 
And in the meantime, Savit still is, seems to be holding his shade of next Ramus. And that's one of the characteristics of a player who has experience with this card, because a lot of times players are very anxious to get the attack off now that it's been powered up a little bit. And it seems like Savit is going to be very selective with his timing on it when to be aggressive here. Yeah, for sure. Though if Clinton plays low tab here, that will kind of force Savit to react, I think. He will at least force his own low tab. Which is, it was not the optimal time to play, because Kalenta doesn't even have action here yet, but certainly a pretty good card. Now he feels safe attacking with the Shade, because that protects the Lothab from an attack from his opponent's Lothab. And his opponent can only cast one spell, so unless it's exactly Sap, uh, he will have to you know, cast Eviscerate and attack the Lothab into the Shade here. So not a great, not good position for Kalenta. His opponent has a lot of damage. Hmm, yeah, how does Clento deal with something like this? Does he... I, I, you want to save Blade Flurry with, like, Deadly Poison and get value, but that's another way you can use if you don't want to uh, waste Eviscerate here. Um, other than that, there's not many ways to get past this Shade of Next Ramus wall. And Clento's already at 17 HP. Oh, man, trading your own health. Mm. That is really painful, <laughs> and that's yeah. actually game already because Savitz has force of nature. This is something that Clento had to make a tough choice, I believe, if he wanted to keep the resources in hand, but this is already game. Yeah, and Clento put himself that to a lot of things there, you know, Savage War Swipe, uh, the force of nature that his opponent had, but, you know, he felt like he had no choice. He couldn't just bend an eviscerate and an attack to kill the 6-6 and pass the turn having no board versus his opponent having two creatures and having an advantage. So, you know, I'm sure he knew it's not very likely that I win this game, but this gives me the best chance. Well, Paulo, that get game was a little anticlimactic because I expected it to go a little mm -hmm. bit longer. Um, Kalento had obviously didn't draw his gadgets in and was hoping that he'd have more juice to the deck. But in the end, it seemed like, you know, the, the aggression was just too strong. And that's what this Druid deck excels at. Being able to uh, pressures too much to the point where you don't get a proper setup. Now let's throw it back to this other side where if you play a really slow deck versus this fa fast druid and you have enough taunts to set up the way, uh, set up in the way, so that way Savage Roar and um, you know Force of Nature can't really be too effective. Then all of a sudden this deck kind of struggles unless it has a really good start and you have cards like Ancient of Lore to drag you into the late game with a lot of power. Um, I personally like the Paladin. Do you like the Paladin here, or do you feel like Druid is still in a good spot? No, I definitely like the Paladin. This is the, the weird spot where the Druid deck is you know, a little bit faster, but not faster enough that it can kill the Paladin deck before it does what it wants to do. And since it's not faster enough, then those cards that make it a little bit faster to begin with are actually liabilities in the late game. So if you go to the late game, I imagine the Paladin deck has you know, a lot more trumps. It has a lot more expensive, powerful cards. And and I think it will go to late game. You know, the Druid deck is not fast enough to stop that from happening. Though All there right, is we'll... one very good advantage for Savitz here in that he already knocked out Kalento's uh, Miracle Rogue deck, which I think is Kalento's best deck to beat Savitz Paladin in this match. So now that that's out of the way, you know, maybe the Paladin deck can just... Um, if he managed to knock Kalento's Paladin deck as well, then Kalento will be left with Warrior and Druid, both of which are not great against Paladin. So, I still like Savit's position here, even though I think he's going to lose this match, this game, sorry. Yeah, I think getting that first win is really important too, because often the field is usually pretty light against everything. It's not like all four of your decks are usually good against uh, one class. I think the exception here is Clento's Hunter, or Clento versus Hunter. So you bring up a really excellent point, making sure to get that early lead, so that way you have the strong advantage matchup-wise. Game 2 is beginning, so let's jump into the board, see if... Kalento can even it up here. Paladin is one of those slower decks. Yesterday, it breeded some of the longest games yet in VGB <laughs> history as a lot of the games went to fatigue. And I don't think it'll be the case in this game, but if Paladin ends up coming here or even winning um, and then going into a mirror match, well, let me tell you, uh, Paulo, I've casted some really long Paladin versus Paladins in the past, and some of them last like this. So we could be in here for a while. Yeah, we, we definitely could. And Kalinta here, I'm sure if he didn't have Wild Power Master, he wouldn't even think about keeping the Holy Light, since he does have it. 
you know, he considered uh, maybe being able to use that effect, the spell effect, but decides that in the end he's just not interested. And well, a very good start for Sipi. It's the best start you could possibly hope for, which is a turn one shade of next Ramos, which is only going to get bigger. That's right. Only to be countered by. What is it? Like, uh, you can't even counter a turn one shade, at least in the normal, <laughs> like in a reasonable mean. Like, the only way you can counter a turn one shades, uh, from what I imagine, is like arcane missiles or like mad bomber cards that no one's really playing right now. Um, so, you're just going to have to deal with it. And Savitz just goes for the immediate attack and uh, yeah. says, you know what? I'm not going to wait too long because I recognize that there's a lot of opportunities for Paladin to answer it if I wait long. So, I'm going to try to get as much damage as I, as I can now. Yeah, and wh what can Kalenta do? You know, he has Humility in his hand, but if he plays it, the, the shade's just going to get bigger anyway. So he's going to shrink it, you know, it's a temporary thing, but it doesn't stop its ability. Right. And it's it goes down to the idea that Savitz realizes Paladin plays slow, and if you try to slow play it, wait with the, sh the shades of Next Ramus and try to, like, make it grow really big um not only can they answer it but they can rebound easily with all the heals and taunts to make shade a lot less effective so he's doing his best to try and put pressure he even thought about savage roaring to take out the wild power mancer and push and now shade next time has to start over he's a 1-1 one, one, <laughs> and next turn he's just going to be a 2-2 two, two. yeah it's going to you know potentially get hit by a stampeding coder next turn but you know there's still that goal in there that could absorb the hit and also this Keeper. Yeah, you're really hoping the Harvest Golem takes the hit. You don't lose any power on board, and you'll still have four minions. Um, Kalento could whiff here. Oh, but he's got double Kodo, and that could be useful, unless he hits two Harvest Golems with it. <laughs> yeah, even if the, the Kodo doesn't... Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> doesn't flat out kill the Shade, you know, it still threatens to kill it next turn, since, so it, it forces a response since it's a three power guy. But, you know, Savitz has a lot of ways to get rid of it. He could just play a taunt of his own, or he could play a low tab and just, you know, not care that his shade is dying, or could attack him with the other two creatures and hero power. This is to go for the aggression here. Hmm. It is, and it's interesting because it's just a stronger minion, and he's not putting out something like Drew the Claw because it's more flexible with something like Savage Roar on turn eight. Although, if you, ha you had the option, an alternative, to play Drew the Claw to protect your smaller minions, so that way she had an extra amnesty doesn't just die here. But I think he recognizes his opponent has a lot of options to deal with it. And, um, you know, if he, if he just plays Drew the Claw defensively, he might miss this opportunity to sneak in damage and also shut down his, ability, his opponent's ability to go for a board wipe. Yeah, definitely. Now he's looking at, you know, 13 damage. Oh, um, man. Hitting the damage last. golem. <laughs> So this Keeper can trade now and be effective, or maybe Savitz can use Swipe or even Savage Roar with some of the damage that he has right here. Yeah, I think I like Savage Roar more because you know Swipe is guaranteed damage next turn, whereas Savage Roar's damage could be stopped by a board clear or a, a taunt guy. So this way you make sure Kalenta, Kalenta's at one life and he can't even play Guardian of Kings, so he has to heal himself some other way. Uh, and get rid of the board. Oh gosh, this is so painful. Um, Kalento's gonna bounce back to 7 health. The Vites will lose one of the minions on board. Most likely the Keeper of the Grove. Although, hmm. Actually, do you kill the Keeper of Grove or do you kill off the Lothab in, the, in hopes that your opponent can have silence, like a second Keeper? I think you, you have to kill Keeper so that you don't die to swipe. Alright, well, that yeah, no, 4 Kalenta. damage <laughs> comes from Drew the Claw, and Swipe is going to be a finisher. Does Kalenta have another way to stay alive? This pressure from the Druid has been insane. No, it looks like he doesn't. He's just dead to the hero power here. Oh, so two very, very fast games. Wow. And and that's, a, that's a really <laughs> important win for Savitz here. Um, he, is not, he even had Black Knight, so if a Tauntra came out, plus more heals, it would have been really difficult for him to, or for Kalento to pull out of that situation. And Savitz is already 2-0 lead. This Druid deck's already served um, its purpose. And even if it loses here, I think Savitz is still very happy with the current state of things. Kalento is going to have to fight <laughs> fire with fire 
a token druid that's slightly more refined than Savits because uh, Savits did sub in that Black Knight, which most likely will be useless in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, you still have, you know, it is a very good answer for a Defender of Argus uh, that taunts Spectron Eye. You know, probably the best answer in the game. So even though I would say that Force of Nature is the superior card overall, we could see a Black Knight blowout, especially because I that's don't true. know if Colento knows his opponent has Black Knight. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point. The surprise factor, because, you know, when I think about it, I always kind of um, I imagine that Drew the Claw is going to go in cat form, and then you have, like, smaller targets to, that you buff, like a Harvest Golem that ends up coming back as 2-1 or Haunted Creeper. But, yeah, you actually bring up really good points. If Clento's not expecting it and taunts up the Spectre Knight, that actually could go disastrously. So I take back my words. Great correction there. So let's go into game three and see if Savits can continue on this hot streak. Is he going to end this series 4-0? Last time what happened in the semifinals, it was very one-sided both ways. It was 4-0 and 4-1. And I really hope that's not the case here. But it doesn't look like Savits has any signs of slowing down at the moment. Yeah. And Colin has got to be feeling a lot of pressure here because if... Uh, if he wins this game, he'll probably have to face the same matchup he just lost, which was Paladin versus uh, Dread. But I think he knows it's a favorable matchup for Paladin. He knows his opponent got a great draw, and he, he wasn't super lucky. So he will be on the receiving end of that matchup next time. Oh my. Well, Clunto ends up curving pretty decently with a turn 1 Harvest Golem innervated, and then now he picked up the Haunted Creeper. Otherwise, he was left top decking um and uh, just basically hero powering if he didn't draw anything else but it seems like savitz also had a relatively slower start where he's not able to use his coin to match the card that innervate was putting out and this is the power of starting off really fast the, the tempo is really key here in this druid matchup so that way you don't lose momentum on board yeah i mean if, if you manage you know colinta's position is very comfortable uh it's so very early his opponent has time to react but what you want to be doing is you you want to be the guy who has the board when when you pass the turn so if you ever have to react you know just for example you have no board then your turn has to be swiped pass that's really bad for you you really want to have the last minion standing and now at least that shade is going to make sure that you know Colento cannot clear his opponent's board so another instance of you know being very important that he cannot be hit the turn comes into play Wow, yeah, this is a moment to just to think. As much as it, it's clear that you don't want to use your spells a little wastefully, um, you always kind of think whether or not it's worth using Savage Roar here. And with just 9 damage, I don't think so. Uh, but there is merit to just an analyzing if there's enough damage in your hand to do something like this. And it, obviously, we know it's a smarter play considering how much Savis can improve the board the next couple turns. Um, say he drops Defender of Argus... Um, next turn, he can drop an Echoing Ooze that's taunted, and then there's just a lot of smaller minions. And he's going to need to keep something like Savage Ward to maybe clear, as opposed to do damage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, so it's probably... Oh, I was going to say he doesn't even use this coin because he wants to Echoing Ooze Defender Fargo's next turn. But apparently, you know, thinks it's fine to wait a turn for that. And just, again, does not attack with that shade. You know, doesn't want to expose it to a swipe, I assume. Yeah, hmm. Well, he's going to go for a very defensive play. I guess he's recognizing that there's a lot of pressure that his opponent can be on. And his opponent might be coming upon a turn where he has to put out a 5 min cost minion that's going to be 4-6. Uh, so it's the matchup has slowed down a lot all of a sudden. And so Vitz kind of has the initiative with uh, what he can do considering that his opponent has chosen to not attack, and he's got the stronger minions overall on board. Yeah, and his opponent you know, has to attack the druid because it has taunt, but uh, Savitz is free to attack whatever he wants. Huh. All right. Well, Kalento all of a sudden has found his, uh, his aggression completely halted, but he picks up Wrath, so some removal spells for the swiping combination. And it can kind of resume as scheduled. Yeah. And he's and got Force of Nature Savage Roar, which is going to hit a little bit earlier than his opponents. Yeah, and his opponent's already at 17, whereas he's at 31. So even though his opponent's uh, hand is does seem you know, significantly better, Valenta still has a lot of ways to win this game. 
Ooh, and the shape finally attacks. Yeah, picking up the easy trade. Now, Savitz did take a lot of beating. Oh, good thing he did, because look, Kalento could have even comboed this turn. Yeah, so what does Kalento do here? You know, he's probably going to kill the shade, but what else? Does he just play a druid in taunt mode and hope to absorb some, some of the hits? Hope his opponent's best plan is just trading with it? Or does he just spend his combo to clear the board? But if he does that, how does he win? You know, his best way to win here seems to be uh, just killing his opponent before his opponent can can make the board matter. And if he spends the combo to clear the board, then that, that venue is gone. Then how does he win? He has to top deck a bunch of ancient of lores. Yeah, that's definitely one of them if you choose to go for a mass removal here. Well, this is attacking into um, the 6th one for sure. I think it's a question of whether or not you want to get removal immediately, or do you want to set up a, the bear form and get taunt, and hopefully these things have to trade into it. But of course, that's very wishful thinking, considering there's lots of ways for the druid to put out damage, so that way the same amount of trades happen anyways. Um, if yeah. you attack one minion, most likely it'll die something like Keeper of the Grove or Swipe, and the same thing might happen on the other end. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, I, I thought Kalinto was going to go for the defensive minion, or the taunt. Um, but apparently not. He, he just wants to clear the board before a Savage War can happen. Yeah, it's it's really maybe... aggressive move. It's 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 something that's counterintuitive to a lot of um players when they're first playing a, a Druid of the Claw because even players do this against a, a deck like Zoo. Normally, the Druid player against Zoo wants to get a lot of value off of cards like Druid of the Claw, but then if you put it in charge form, you get to dictate the trades that often happen. Um, not necessarily in this scenario, but in other ones where you might want to pick off a smaller minion so that way it makes it more awkward for your opponent. So. A lot of times, Druid the Claw can be played aggressive as just like a 5 mana double removal card. Yeah, that's definitely a very, very strong card. And so it's pick one of his own. So that's probably gonna wait. Here's the Vitz, what do you do here? You... You Defender of Artists mm -hmm. to trade with that, that Ancient of Lore? It doesn't sound too bad. Play Harvest Golem and, def and Defender up, put two targets on. Yeah, Kalento did draw two of his other very powerful minions, you know. So that's almost all of his late game that's already in his hand. There's only one more Ancient of Lore in his deck. Hmm. I think you want to do that too because you realize your opponent's coming up on uh, turn 9. And he might have full combo as well, so it sounds like the strongest overall play. Yeah, and he just wants to clear the board, you know, and make sure that the combo is not too devastating. Mm -hmm. His opponent is at 27, so probably doesn't think it's going to matter if he hits the face. Alright, now Clento has to kind of be careful too. He says, if I go for a, a setup where I play one of my 5 drops, do I have to play Lotheb because I'm afraid of combo? But then Lotheb just easily gets picked off by Spectra Knight, so then the... The body is not actually very valuable versus if you go for like you separate your combo use force of nature for partially helping to clear is that giving up too much of your win condition this is a little bit of a tricky situation for kalento yeah i think kalento's best play might be just to play low tap force of nature which is not good but as you as you said like if he just plays that low tap he's going to trade with a 5-2 knight and he doesn't want that happening at the same time, if he just plays Force of Nature, he wastes two, two threes on a three three guy that he could just wrap away. So, not not a lot of good choices for Kalento. He has choices, but none of them is, is particularly appalling. All right. Well, expend Savage Roar with it so he can go for some kind of board clear, taking a little bit of damage. You can get behind it. You just reset the, the board. Oftentimes, you're relying on the combo for power as a finisher, uh, but don't forget how much the board does matter, especially if your opponent has the turn 9, and he had a lot of potential to do big damage with combo. So, a tough choice, but I think a necessary one for Kalenta. Yeah. And, you know, at least Kalenta knows he has a lot of his late game in his hand already, 
So he, I think he doesn't at this point. Uh, whereas before, it looked like he was only going to be able to win with the combo. And he drew Ancient Floor into Spectre Knight and Mode Tap. So that changed the situation completely. And it was very well done of Clanto that he was able to reevaluate that and recognize it. Okay. Clanto can put out Lothab and Spectre Knight, but first you Wrath and see what you get. Ooh. But uh, I think Lothab is a higher priority. <laughs> You're at 15 health. You realize that uh, it's, it's going to be hard to survive if your opponent had a lot of damage. So respect the yeah, combo and to... place out the Lothab. Ooh, a great draw by Savit. You know, meaning that he can play and that will definitely do something, whether it's healing himself and putting you know, further away from combo range or, or just drawing two cards. And I think you have to go for two cards here. You're not going to survive the combo this turn anyway, and Colenta's already spent, you know, one of each. Well, he's, he's not going to survive the, the combo, but he's healing himself anyways, and let's see, 24... He certainly dies to a full set of second combo, but maybe he was also playing around a lot of other damage because there's nine existing. Yeah, he maybe he's playing 19. around one part of the combo. Yeah, like probably just Savage Roar with like Swipe. Yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. You know, he thinks he doesn't doesn't need cards at this point. Well, it did draw the Force of Nature, so... Hmm. All right, well, Savit's got some important intel. He's like, well, second Ancient of Lore is out, and it seems like my opponent doesn't have the combo and was using everything defensively. Now, he can deal with what's on board. It's a little bit uh, tricky, but he, he too will also go for combo and put his opponent most likely down to one health, unless he's going to go for a clear, which I highly advise <laughs> against because <laughs> it's you're right there, so just might as well put the burden on your opponent to survive the next turn. All right, Glento yeah. needs Savage Roar off the top here. Hmm. Ooh, that doesn't do it. Yeah, Glento could armor up, but that doesn't matter because he has Keeper. So he can just shoot the face. Yeah. All so right, Clinton. so a gamble that pays <laughs> off. So he's because of Fist Pump, realizing like, woof. Well, that yeah. was uh, my all-in play, realizing that he had only spells in hand, nothing on board to kind of get that repetitive damage in. Oh, hey, look, Black Knight, I guess, does get value <laughs> in this <laughs> I must safeguard the map. Yeah, and Collector can't be happy about that, you know. He's down to his last deck and has to pour over his opponent to win now. Wow. Zero three. Uh, off of this druid deck. Oop. Oh, so he accidentally <laughs> accidentally queued up right again. Um, so we're, we'll have to have to fix that administratively. Going to the warrior deck, this can struggle a lot against the the druid as well for the same reasons that um, you know maybe other decks that are slow to the paladin for the same reason you just may not get to that late game whatsoever if druid gets the fast enough start. And I think Savit's played a very nice game, a nice series so far. It seems like he's made very powerful moves and um, calculated his best chances of winning at every given moment. And this is one of the classes that I feel like Druid's favored against the most because of how hard it is for Warrior to kind of efficiently remove, especially if you have Spectre Knight early or Shade Next Ramus that are shredding armor and they can't ever utilize something like Shield Slam. Yeah, and again, Colento does not have a Brawl in his deck. So... I don't think Savitz knows that, but, you know, if it ever gets to a point where Savitz's board is just too good, Colento will have no way to bounce back. Mm. He has well, to make sure he doesn't fall too far behind early, but there are not that many cards in the Warrior deck that stop that. You know, there, there are a couple of them, but he has to draw them. Yeah, it's going to be hard for sure, and Colento, I mean, it's, it might be the case where he has to be extremely scrappy, and then use a lot of cards early on. Savitz might hit something like Ancient of Lore and then just even out-card the Warrior, which is kind of rare sometimes when you're being the aggressive Druid. So it's not looking good for our reigning champion. Can he pull out of the 0-3 hole? It's not impossible, uh, but it's going to be very hard. Let's go to game four and see if Savitz can pull out the brooms or will Colento stay alive here.
Okay, so Kalenta does have some of the early game cards he needs. He has a Taskmaster and a Stable Goal. Ooh, it doesn't want a Taskmaster. I guess, you know, it doesn't actually kill a lot of creatures in Savit's deck. So even though it's an early body, the effect is not that powerful. And he's just yeah. not interested. Needs a Fiery War Axe of some sort to combine with, like, the Unstable Ghoul. And we're talking about Shadanax, Ramus, and Spectre Knight as two of the important <laughs> cards early game. And Savit's has both. And so yeah, that's going to really sting <laughs> for when... He can use his Innervate and Spectre Knight and completely ruin Kalento's game plan. Ooh, okay, so just decides to just go for the, the early Spectre Knight, knows there's nothing in Kalento's deck that can match it. Uh, one alternative would have been to just coin out the Shade here and next play the Innervate out the, the Spectre Knight next turn, but wow. just decides to put that minion there. That's actually such an important draw for Kalento here, so that way Unstable Ghoul kind of at least does something for him, other than 2 yeah. damage to Spectre Knight. And he's picked up Death Spite. Wow, Ooh. two really big draws here for Kalento. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was exactly what he needed. That's probably the only card in his deck that dealt with that guy right now. Oof, and a resounding no from the Warrior deck based off what's happened so far. Now, Savitz most likely wants to silence this Acolyte and deny any more draws, recognizing that eh, most likely um, it's worth it. But he's also evaluating to see, hmm, is there, is there a better play? I don't think so. And who decides to kill it? Okay, so uh, thinks the one two body is more important than one card. And does again does not attack with his shade. Another is a silence out of the way, and Kalinti could just play the ledge voucher. You know, shade will grow bigger than ledge voucher, but yeah, it's gonna take one damage from the death. That's by the fact, so... Huh. I guess, I'm guessing that Shade will have to wait for yet another turn if he doesn't want to trade it. Yeah, I guess Savitz really didn't want uh, the 1-2 to pop things like Execute. But, um, man, the extra draw ends up being pretty good, because Kalento now is one card deeper. He has his Execute, he, he has uh, you know another Death Spite, so he can kind of plan out his turn. Uh, also really important is he has good combinations like a uh, shield block, shield slam, um, or death spite execute. These are help him to deal with bigger minions as the game scales. So Kalento seems to be coming out of the woods here, and I think he's going to be okay barring any kind of uh, crazy plays from Savitz in the next couple turns. Yeah. So Kalento chooses to play that the the weapon instead of arming up, armoring up, and just you know trades that minion for. For the 5-5, five five. takes 5 damage in the process, but decides that, you know, board is more important than life at this point. He just gain life back later with his hero power, and board might be too hard to get back. Alright, well, Kalento can start being defensive here. I mean, he's got some good late game cards already with Ysera in his, at his disposal. Druid can't really deal with a card like that without naturalize or poison seeds two very situational cards that they rarely use now so he can spend a lot of removal be defensive and armor up to a really healthy life total and shade and axe ramus is still being super passive yeah clinton knows he has the edge last game so uh, late game and he knows his opponent doesn't actually run a lot of late game minions so he doesn't feel like he needs to save the removal for anything you know he knows his opponent doesn't have a ragnaros that he's an zero of his own so, feels free to use Execute and Shift Slam very liberally. And we finally see the Shade attacking. That's right, the ever patient ghost here. Yeah, the strength's probably just gonna be, you know, Karen armor for Kalento. Unless he's. Yeah, his opponent's only on 7 mana, so he probably wants to wait to play Low Tab uh, when it would actually disrupt his opponent's curve. So if he doesn't play that now, it stops his opponent from playing Swipe. Uh, do you do you really want to trade 6 life here to kill the Shade? I think you do because you have no other forms of removal, but uh, yeah, Kalento yeah. doesn't want to dig for Shield Block um, to try and risk it. That could have been a pretty bad turn otherwise. Yeah, you, you have to do it. The Shade is going to attack you for, for 7 if you don't do it now, and it's only going to get worse. I think he's actually pretty happy to do that. Uh, I think you're happy in the sense that, um, you know, if you're stranded on the island and you're you somehow catch a 
the infection, you have to amputate something. <laughs> it's like, okay, I guess I have to. Um, yeah. So happy is a very subjective word here. It is better than the alternative. Yeah, I guess. Sure, sure. <laughs> How much does Savitz want to extend it to something like Brawl? Haunted Creeper is um, his last minion, effectively, and then he's just playing spells. Yeah, I don't think he cares about extending that Hunter Creeper into a Brawl. Hmm. Well, he has, uh, he can't play Savage Roar, or Savage Roar, sorry, Swipe and Force of Nature next turn, so he's only got 7 damage max from the hand. Hmm. Yeah, now it's a, I guess a decent spot for Kalento. I'm guessing he doesn't, he wants to play that low tab, he just doesn't just, you know, doesn't want to just put himself bad to the combo here. But the question is, if he plays low tap now, can he beat the combo next turn? And I think I think he can, but clearing that board will be will be pretty hard. Oh, definitely. There's just so many sticky minions, and they leave yeah. something every single time. So you go for a lot of small removals, and there's still yeah. something there, and the every single body counts as plus two because of what your opponent can do. Now, there's also a school of thought where if you can get away without using Lothab, the longer you can hold him, the stronger your plays will be as a, as a way to deny combo over the course of turns. If you just remove a bunch of bodies this turn, then you feel like you won't die to combo, then Lothab can wait. And then that buys you extra time. Because we know the longer this game goes, the warrior is starting to become more in favor. But it also comes down to a very scary guess. From your opponent so i think lento is not going to risk it he says lothep has to come down now not to mention that it's also damage on board with something like alex straza he could flip the switch and do 13 damage um right back as opponent if uh he shows a lot of weakness like say he plays yeah. his entire hand and nothing else happens so colento attacks the face here with death because he doesn't want to put himself dead to savage war hmm. which is just drew oh hmm so if he attacked any minion, he would die this turn. So pretty, pretty good play from Colento. And you know he wants to set up that death wow. next turn because then he can kind of clear those minions and also get rid of you know their death rattle effect. That is a really good observation. I did not notice that. And you're absolutely right. He has 13 damage. Savitz is one damage off killing his opponent right now. That's got to be really annoying because he can't hero power. Savage War costs eight. Yeah. So things lining up perfectly for Kalento as as far as they could, but you know your spawn still has that combo for next turn. And how? Wait, do you but now that? you can remove completely, right? Uh, you yeah, attack Death Spite, and you can bounce back up to 15 with Alex Straza, <laughs> and the plays continue. He's gonna be one out of the range, and the Death Rattle order is so important. Savitz needs to get Innervate in order to end this game. Yeah, Savitz needs. Uh, you know, Innervate or another form of direct damage spell. And if he doesn't kill... Well, not even direct damage wouldn't even help, because Kalento has that shield block, so... It seems like if he doesn't kill Kalento now, he will, will not do that ever. And I don't... he can't do it now, so... Looking really great for Kalento here. Alex Trazek conveniently putting him at 15, which is one more than the combo can deal. Wow, he's. I feel like Savitz might be even going for the kill here and realizing Wrath might be a top deck scenario where he needs to kind of get an extra draw. But this is so scary um, <laughs> for the Warrior deck because if you don't have a way to bounce back or like a or, or like a taunter of some kind, you can be in trouble. Ragnaros, you would be useful if he had the luxury of um, kind of going for it. But in this scenario, he's just hoping that his opponent doesn't have... Eight damage. Yeah, and he doesn't. So looks like yeah. So it's gonna still draw something, but mm. yeah, looks like it's it's out at this point. Yeah, Savitz has Wrath, which uh, isn't enough, and I don't think like he only needed Ragnaros. That was basically his one outer, but he doesn't have it in his deck, and Kalento stays alive, one to three, and it seems like he is kicking and alive here. Uh, yeah, but it's still a... kind of an uphill climb against some of the decks that Savitz has. Yeah, such a close game here. You know, it could have gone the other way if any little thing had happened differently, but it all lined up perfectly, and Alonso managed to steal that.
Right, and that's just the warrior deck in a nutshell. It doesn't matter if it's one HP. He sometimes can just bounce back and rebound uh, very effectively with some of the life gain and stall mechanics that it has. Now, one of the decks it does struggle against in the late game, as much as Control Warrior is strong and slow, uh, Paladin is slower and has lots of great tools, um, namely the hero power in the late game scenario. And yesterday is the exact same scenario that we're talking about with Savitz versus Hyped where the warrior was pretty powerless against the onslaught of 1-1s one -ones constantly picking apart as uh, the threats kept getting destroyed. So it's going to be tough. If I feel like there's an, a huge advantage here in Savita's end, it might be in this very moment because Paladin is well-equipped to deal with warrior. Yeah, I would imagine so. As I said, the hero power is so important here because gaining two armor, not super relevant, but adding board presence for free, super relevant. So they're, they're playing very similar cards, except the hero power is much better from the Paladin side, and it has that equality threat, which the warrior just doesn't. So if the warrior deck manages to get too far ahead early, not very likely, but it could happen, then uh, Savitz can clear the board. But if the Paladin deck gets too, too ahead early, then, you know, Kolenta cannot do anything. So two advantages here for the Paladin deck, I think. All right, let's see if Ecop's Paladin can serve his former doggy. Well, once again, uh, Ecop and Savage used to be teammates back when they were just a clan of friends in early beta of Hearthstone. And now they're on opposing teams, but it seems like they're still helping each other, at least with some of the deck building and preparation. Uh, we see that Kalento is going to start off with Armorsmith, which is good to disincentivize a lot of the early tokens. And that's one of the key ways for Warrior to stabilize. It's the same way that the Warrior tries to approach the Shaman where if you can control the board and make sure that the hero power never becomes a, an issue, then you can get really far ahead and your threats, like Karen in the mid game, can come down safely and then start really making uh, work of whatever Paladin puts out. Yeah, you know, here it's not as, as important that you get armor from Armorsmith, because again, the game is not going to be about that, but it is super important that you denied your hero power. Yes, well, there's also this thing of the Acolyte of Pain <laughs> where you can kind of make it hard for your opponents to to deal with it. But then you're on the back of your mind, you're worried about an easy trade like Cool Taskmaster. So I think Shade next Ram is a slightly more safe play here. Yeah, and Shade does get better, you know, the earlier you play it. Strike, strike. Oh yeah, definitely. You want to get at the extra plus one, plus one buff. Yeah, and he can kill the, the armor fifth now. So that would, you know, cleared away for... This turn is probably going to be Shieldmaster, but cleared away for Acolyte next turn. Alright, so Kalanto doesn't really get too much uh, off of his armor smith, but at least a little bit of health and some damage. He has inflexibility to utilize, um, like, his execute and shield slams. Yeah, has to shield slam the... The Taskmaster here, which is not what he was hoping for, probably, but still retains, you know, board parity at least. And now he's gonna start dropping big guys. And a huge card picked up by Savitz. You know, Harrison That's Jones, it. very important. Uh, it's almost an insta keep. If you're ever playing a control matchup against Warrior and you're absolutely sure it's Warrior, um, Harrison Jones is one of those cards that, you know, Kit Kat says it's always a keeper because of its high impact. Um, not to mention, it's just so good to replace itself in drawing a card. And of course, if Warrior ever gets sloppy and they just equip like a Fiery War Axe at the end of the turn and has two charges, then uh, well, you're in for a very good day. Yeah, and you know, sometimes they just plan their entire game around uh, the fact that they think they're going to have a weapon next turn. Imagine that last game, if Colento's Death Bite had gotten destroyed a turn earlier, you were just completely demolished. Oh yeah, for sure. Your game plan gets ruined. Now, uh, this combination is always one of the favorites of Paladin, utilizing uh, the Acolyte of Pain with some kind of attack reduction, whether it's Peacekeeper or Humility. It's one of the main card engine draws, too, because Paladin, besides the cards that we see here with um, Harrison Jones and Acolyte, um, it's really just lay on hands, and then you don't really have a lot of card draw, so you're pretty reliant on this to carry you through the, um, the mid-game. Um, and even the early stages, honestly. So Savitz is on a really good roll here. It seems like pretty much whatever comes out, he's got a perfect answer. He's got a quality in case things get too hairy. And uh, he also has um, just perfect responses to whatever scenario that the warrior can throw at him. 
Yeah, no, he wants to be greedy. He could even hold light his acolyte of pain and just keep attacking and drawing extra cards. <laughs> yeah, imagine he's not gonna do that. But, ooh, interesting. Chooses to use hero power instead of playing shit of Nax Travis. So, it's trying to maximize cards as opposed to board presence. You know, doesn't think this game is gonna be about tempo, thinks this game is gonna be about cards. Which is very sensible, I think, considering his opponent is at 34 and has a bunch of answers in his deck. So, pretty good that he recognizes what's gonna matter here. Oh yeah, Paladin Games is a lot like life. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. You have to really plan out the next course of 15 minutes of this game. Um, get mileage off of your hero power and recognize that your opponent could have board clears he could have a lot of opportunities to completely make your cards go one for two or one for three so you want to try to maximize and make your opponent uncomfortable yeah so kalinta just finally decided to pull the trigger on that on that karen so getting his four or five which is probably just going to die to a weapon attack i would imagine once the unstable goal triggers. Yeah. Attacking with this Alder Peacekeeper versus the other cards, um, you want to make sure not to give your opponent too much armor. So as much as you might feel like there's an opportunity to attack with Acolyte and evaluate based off of whatever you draw, you don't want to give your opponent a little bit too much armor. Just a small tidbit there. So Savit's really thinking through all of his plays. Kalento, in the meantime, he's struggling. He's just going to have a few cards, a few legendary threats, but most likely should be easily dealt with what Savitz has in hand. Yeah, so he does have, you know, one equality, his Sylvanas, his Silence, so he's, yeah, he's pretty well equipped. Oh, oh man, it hits the face, and that is not a good sign whatsoever for Kalento. Savitz has many ways to deal with this. Yeah, it is going to prompt a response, though. There's at least that. Are we going to see an equality here? Just to deal with Ragnar's? You know. I think I like Sylvanas and just hero power a little bit better. Because most likely Ragnaros is going to be uncomfortable yeah. next turn. And you can't worried. just steal it, right? Yeah, you're not really worried about your life, though. Because you're 17 and you have Guardian of Kings and mm -hmm. Holy Light, if it comes right. to that. So you don't really care if Ragnaros hits you. All right, well, Kalento does have the finishing combo of Deathsbite and Gromash. And let's just say this, let's just assume this if Ragnaros ends up hitting, like, the face again, or even um, killing off the Sludge Belcher token. Is there a way for you to set this up for the next couple of turns to win? Because it seems like Savitz's game plan is set for a while. And there's an opportunity for you to kill him before he's able to heal up. But it's, it's kind of tricky here because Paladin has the board like you can set these things up with death bite and whatnot if you're able to kind of uh, pick apart and trade but from here you're just fighting an uphill battle yeah and the problem here is that you know Savitz can just suicide his sylvanas into the ragnaros and just steal that so if you if you make the play that you know is trying to to go for damage eh. i'm not sure it's not looking good for kalento i think his best choice is probably blow that yeah, low tab is so bad too because it runs into the Sylvanas mm -hmm. and just lets us to Ragnos for free, so he can't really play that. Yeah, I think you have to develop this death spite in, on the off chance that it gives you an opportunity to um, use Gromash. And in this Ragnaros, actually, I think his best target is now to hit the face. <laughs> and yeah, not Sylvanas. Be. No, it hits Sylvanas and needs to not take Ragnaros. Okay, well, yeah, at least that, that, that was... oh, the worst case scenario has been avoided. <laughs> That was actually fine because it prompted the Sylvanas trigger before his opponent could get rid of the Acolyte of Pain. So, I don't think Kalento is super unhappy with that. He's definitely not super happy, but... Well, I mean, you know. he killed off um, Sylvanas pretty effectively. It's as, as if uh, Acolyte traded places, so... Eh, not bad, but still in a situation where he's still afraid of several things, that's for sure. Yeah, here, this will probably prompt, well, again, probably prompt a response from Savitz. Who could kill those Ragnaros in a bunch of different ways. You know, could just attack it, and Harrison Jones or Consecration. 
that would kill it, but it could also just play Humility, but that would expose all of his guys to the Death Spy trigger. So it's, it seems like whichever way he, he decides to kill that. He needs to attack with Token first before he uses Harrison Jones. <laughs> okay. Yeah, could, now that it's gone, could play Humility now, but decides to just attack instead. Alright, so Ragnaros is down, and so is one of the main ways to pop Gromash. Kalanto does draw another thing to play this turn. Now, Extraza could be useful, but you're putting so many cards, and it's just the same exact scenario. If Paladin can get away without using premium removal, like a quality, and use minions instead to trade, then they're just so well suited for the late game. It's almost hilarious how easy it is for Paladin sometimes with mm -hmm. um, how they effectively neuter a bunch of these legendary cards. Yeah, and you know, Paladin always has a lot of cards in hand because they use their hero power so much instead of playing cards. Yeah. Uh, even when you get, you know, what looks like a 3 4 or a 4 for one you realize, well, those were just, you know, your hero power minions. You didn't actually get a card. And this is one of the primary ways for um, Warrior to end the game. Gromash has been dealt with, so his best finisher has now been taken out. And there's only a few more threats, I believe, in Kalento's deck other than Alex Straza. He has his own Sylvanas and he has Yasera. Nothing else comes to mind, though. I think his Cairn was easily dealt with. Yeah, Yasera does come into hand. He really needs a big card from this. Like, Yasera's Awakened. Yeah, but even if he gets that, well, he does get it. But at, at this point, we're thinking, is it just going to delay the inevitable? No, I mean, there's a lot of mid-range cards um, from what Paladin has. So if Yasera can effectively pick off a trade, which ha, I guess a quality is going to be used because that's the best way for Paladin to deal with it, um, there's ways for him to completely swing the board if Savit overextends. Oh, so it chooses to use Holy Light and Sledge Voucher uh, instead of Guardian of Kings. Oh, I forgot about Faces Manipulator. That's also a potential way to c climb back if you could face those opponents' um, really powerful cards. Yeah, like a Tyrion. Now that Harrison Jones is gone, you know, last... Yesterday we saw someone steal a Harrison Jones, sorry, steal a Tyrion and then get their weapon Harrison Jones. But this can happen this game. If Colanto steals Tyrion, he's gonna keep it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> now... Let's see, are you afraid of your opponent going for like a Sylvana steal on your Tyrion? Savitz doesn't even be. think about it, he just realizes <laughs> this is the best play at the moment because his Guardian of Kings is definitely not as strong as the Tyrion play. But Colento now has a great target for Faceless and might open up yet another opportunity for him to climb back in this game. It's not over. Yeah, and he also has ways to pop the Divine Shield and to get rid of the token. So... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, maybe playing that Tyrion was, you know, kind of rushed at this point, especially since he he lost his Silence guy. You know, I see a lot of people who keep the the Spellbreaker in their hands till the very end of the game, because the yep. only thing they're afraid of with Paladin is getting their Tyrion copied or stolen. So it's like a safety net, but he doesn't have that anymore. I was gonna have to spend a lot of cards to get rid of that Tyrion. And the weapon is actually threatening his life total. He's at 13, so the weapon alone could kill him. That's true, but he does have heals. He's got Garden of Kings, he's got Lay on Hands. So I yeah. think um, the weapon verse isn't what he's concerned about as much as how do I effectively remove this without giving up a lot of my cards. Consecration will allow him to clear the board. Um... But then your plays afterwards are still a little bit weak. I guess you could drop the Pyromancer and Hero Power. Hmm. Yeah. So both people, both players getting Ashbringers. Yeah. And now that Gromach has been used, I think he's more, he's Feeling really comfortable with life total. Oh, I don't know about using the the second wild pyromancer because I guess you don't have a immediate proc off the equality. But this is for him to rush for damage in a way because now palad now warrior all of a sudden is on like a weird clock that paladin's able to pressure, and all of a sudden a win condition has been set when normally paladin's just kind of a sit and wait for your opponent to run out of ants or run out of threats. 
Yeah, for sure. And you know, those life gain spells are going to be really important if the game comes down to a race. But it looks like Colenta does not want to make into a race. He wants to make it about board still. So recognizes that even though his opponent looks like he's vulnerable, he has a lot of heals in his deck. Oh and man, those are probably in his hand. Ooh, Colento Colento is trying no to um, he's trying to bait as much damage, and then Alex draws himself back up to fifteen. So this is a kind of a clever way to exhaust one charge of the weapon and get uh, use, and s even save like a, a taunter. So that way the weapon's a little bit less effective against his um, yeah for sure against his arsenal here. Well, killing the Honda Creeper, yeah, so that his tokens you know, get killed by an unstable goal. Mm -hmm. If he didn't do this shield slam, then Kodo actually would end the game. So another heads up play, Klenta recognizing, well, it still can go wrong if he pushes through and has the 8 damage. Question is, do you want to play shield master too? Yeah, it wouldn't end the game, right? He, he was a 10. Oh, you're right. I forgot about the yeah. armor up. Forgot. You're right. Yeah, but still good. You know, probably not going to get a lot of armor in the turns to come. So you might think, oh, he should save Shield Slam for, you know, Guardian of Kings, but he's not going to be able to kill that. Wow, Savitz is hovering over his last equality because he realizes um, he also has Humility and Kodo. So the combination is still very strong and he can take out whatever last few remaining threats. He knows Alex Straza is one of the few cards remaining that he has to be worried about. Yeah, and it's probably going to come down this turn, finally. Yep, yeah, and bounce himself back up to 15 health. Utilize yeah. Ashbringer. Garden King staying alive at 5-1 is pretty clutch, because now the Kodo comes down, and there's a five. There's 10 damage on the backswing. Oh, even better than, than Humility. Yeah. For two mana, summon a 3-3. Three, three. Sounds pretty decent. Ooh, decides to keep it. Okay, doesn't want to get brawled. All right, well, Colenso looks like he's could be on his last turn, but he... I mean, he's, he's pulled out of tire situations. Yeah. Oh, it does draw a good card for that. But the fact that his opponent has a 5-1 is super annoying. You know, that Death Spite is not going to be able to, to trigger this turn. Hmm. Yeah, if it was on its second life here, the second durability, Kalento yeah, actually that, is in a spot where he might be able to actually do this, but this has all of a sudden gone to a game of math. He ha might have to attack this 1-1. One, one. Or maybe just attack the face. Either way, the outcome's about the same. Yeah, I lean towards attacking the face here, but there's probably a lot of math involved that, that could make either decision correct. I think Colento still has Sylvanas too, by the way. So yeah, I think if he, he can survive this and clear, he might be able to disarm whatever Savitz comes out next. Yes, yeah, so he doesn't have a lot of threats himself, but again, he does have that hero power. Which is in itself a threat. It's come down to so long that I think Clunto's really worried about what other cards that Savitz could have at his disposal. And uh, it looks like Savitz is going to draw... Oh man, he has the Black Knight <laughs> off the top, which means he's going to be able to push through. And Savitz is going to go to the finals. Yep. Yeah. And it feels like Colento is not going to be able to defend his title. Well, a good showing despite um, you know not being able to pull out a lot of wins. Colento showed up a really strong set of games, I feel like. 4-1 was not indicative of some of the close games that we had. Uh, but overall, Colento is going to drop here, and his crown has been taken. And Savic will challenge in the grand finals, awaiting Fake and Nairia. Savic, the player from the open bracket. The unknown making a name for himself. Yeah, could play against another open bracket player if Fake wins this match. That's right. Um, that's going to be our next match. The first semis is done. 
and Savitz will await the winner between Fake and Naria, two of the lesser known players. We're just kind of saying Savitz was unknown facetiously considering uh, he did come in from the 256 man qualifier bracket. Another player did, his name was Fake, and he performed very well. Um, in fact, he also did good in the BlizzCon qualifiers. We'll tell you all about it after the break. But before we do, we want to remind you about your chance to win the Zeus Mini Cyberpower PC at the link you see on the screen. Also type giveaway in chat to see more about how to subscribe to the VGVN Next Ramus. Oops, sorry, the VGVN newsletter. <laughs> it's not a newsletter about Next Ramus. Uh, find out a little bit more about what they're trying to do to make sure that voters' rights for video games um, are properly informed and what they're trying to do in the Supreme Court. It's a lot of cool stuff and it's free, it's easy, and it gets you eligible to win this raffle. So make sure to check it out while we take a few minutes and get ready for our second semifinals between Fake and Nyria here at VGVN3.